Nittany, 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 Nittany! Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nittany Draws. I'm Nittany, and today I'm coming at you with a really, really quick little video um, that was kind of requested on my Facebook group, um, which was how to deal with artist block when you have it. And art <laughs> this is a hard one for me because I have chronic artist block. There was actually an entire period of about two years where I didn't draw at all. Um, I, when I was in college, I went to college for business and I had sort of a, like a mental breakdown halfway through college. And when I say mental breakdown, I don't mean like, oh my God, I had a mental breakdown. I mean like we contemplated putting me in a hospital mental breakdown. And it was really, really bad. And I, I, I couldn't get out of bed for days at a time. I didn't shower, I didn't move. And it was mostly because I felt like my career was going nowhere. And I felt like I had, I had nothing. Um, I, I had gone through a really, really bad breakup and I ended up back in my parents' basement. I was 21 years old. Um, I had moved across country and that didn't work out. So I had to move all the way back home and it was just a really, really, really hard time in my life. And, excuse me, <coughs> about then was when I met my now husband and also when I found out about Etsy. And I knew that I was a creative person. I had been drawing since I was about 11 years old. Um, and I like sewing and I like doing other crafty things. And so I knew that this was something that I enjoyed, but I wasn't sure if it was something that I was good enough at, that I could market it, and that I was that I that I was talented enough at the actual art itself, and that I was good enough to market it, and that I could find a group that it could be marketed to. Um, so what I started doing was I basically did a Google search and went on Pinterest, and I found out what the most popular stuff was, and I made a bunch of junk, <laughs> uh, uh, crappy cork boards. Um, magnets, thing, things that were kishy, things that were easy, and things that I could mass produce on an individual level with not very much capital because I didn't have a job. And so what I did is I listed a bunch of stuff up on Etsy because it's only a 20 cent listing fee and I was like, I'm going to do this. This is, this is the best I've got right now because I can't physically make myself get out of bed to go to work. So this is what I'll do. And so I worked with a completely like focused attention on making mass produced crap basically. And I did that for about three months. I saw a few sales, but not very much. And I wasn't very passionate about it, but it did force me to get myself out of bed, which was good. Um, and I didn't draw at all. I didn't draw for about two years during this time period. And it was really hard because I tend to work through my problems on paper. And after, I don't know, maybe six months of doing this, I got my button gear, I got out of bed, I went and got a job. I was working as a waitress again. I'm still working as a waitress, but I worked at a different place then. And um, so I went out and I got myself a job and I got myself working and I started having enough money to like have, a, have an apartment again. So I moved into a new apartment and I got myself a car again because I'd been in a really bad car accident and I had been afraid to drive for a really long time. And then I like was like, I can't, I can't wait anymore for this. I can't put my life on hold because I'm afraid. So I went out and got a car. And then I moved in with my now husband and we got a cat. <laughs> and that really helped feeling like I had some agency in my life feeling like I could do something. And so we converted the extra bedroom in our apartment into an art room. And I sewed all through the night and <laughs> I did a lot of like making crap and going to art shows with crap. And it, I mean, it went well. I sold a decent amount of money and I still had a job at the time to help me pay. So I didn't have to stress too much, but it was nice to have that little extra thing to fall back on if I needed to. Um, then, what was that, 2011? No, 2012. 2012, I had my first art show, and the art show came because Fran, 
I, she texted me and was like, hey, do you want to do an art show? And I was like, uh, I don't have anything for one. And she was like, too bad, get up and go do it. And I was like, oh, okay. So I uh, signed up to do this art show and I had been, th I had been thinking for a while that I was going to go out and get Copic markers. Um, at this point, I'd never played with one before. I'd only played with Prismacolor markers and I hated them. And so I thought of myself as a Prismacolor pencil artist. Prismacolor pencil takes a ridiculous amount of time, just so you know. Um, and so my pieces would take like 30 hours or so to complete and they're not even that detailed. So I was doing a lot of work for not a whole lot of reward because back then I wasn't even selling this stuff. And so I went out and I got myself, I don't know, maybe six colors of Copic and they were three grays and two blues and probably yellow is what I got. And lit I mean, literally, I didn't have, I didn't have enough money to buy these, but I bought them anyway because I wanted to do this art show and I felt like it was probably a good thing to do. And so I gave up my gas money to go and buy these markers. And so I went and got the markers and I had some Bristol paper left over in the closet that I used. And that's what I drew Nyx and Artemis on. And I drew them sitting at the table in my, my apartment with these markers. And I fell in love with them. They were so, so easy to adjust to for me. I, I know a lot of people do have trouble adjusting to them, but for the way that I draw and the way that I do my art, it just felt so perfect. And they went into my hand just right and it felt like coming home. And so I went out and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna make a couple pieces. I'm gonna do this art show. And <laughs> so in the prep work for the art show, I had no artwork ready to hang. I had no prints. I had <laughs> no merchandise. I had no business cards, I had nothing, and I had a booth that I needed to fill, and my art was going up in the actual art show portion as well. So I, did, I had to come up with something, um, and the theme was Venus Rising. So I did a Greek goddess series, I did Cupid, Artemis, and Nyx. And Cupid I did with Prismacolors. But my Prisma colors were in really bad shape at that point, so I didn't really have a whole lot of colors left. I had pre previously, when I was in high school, my parents had bought me the, the big Prisma color set. But at that point, they were like five or six years old anyway. So it was some of the colors that I really love were gone, and then other colors had started to break because they get brittle if left in the heat, and I was a high school student, so I didn't take care of my things back then. And so I just had a lot of weird happening in my world. and. I went out, I got these Copics, and I fell in love with them. And then I did this art show and it was amazing. And since then, I, at the end of the art show, I was like, oh my God, this is, this is the thing that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And then I went home and I was like, I'm broke. <laughs> so I didn't draw for probably three months because I didn't have money to buy more art supplies. And because I felt like I needed to do research um, into how to market myself as an artist and into how to make money and what I needed to do, basically, because I had no idea. Up to that point, I was a craft artist. I sold throw pillows and things like that. I didn't do fine art. Here comes the dog. Sorry, he's loud. Um, <laughs> So up to that point, I didn't really do anything that was fine art. And so I went out of my way to start doing fine art. And here comes the dog. Hi, puppy dog. I started doing fine art and I sat around for hours a day just staring at blank paper. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing with this. I have no idea how to market this. I don't know what I'm doing. And I just filled notebook after notebook after notebook with notes and information and stuff from other artists and what they were doing at the time and how how they started doing what they do and 
I didn't make any art. <laughs> like that's like, that's the major point is that like you're supposed to make art if you're going to be an artist for a living and I just didn't. I didn't get any better as an artist because I didn't work at it and I spent over a year doing that. I didn't make anything real. I like I did some like nonsensical sketching inside a book, but I didn't do anything because I felt like if I did anything, it wouldn't be profitable. And that was something that I really had to work through was doing art only because, sorry, dog knocked the camera. Doing art only because it was profitable. I had to do art for myself first and learn to love what I made and then that would become profitable. I still struggle with this because a lot of the times I'm looking at stuff and I'm like, eh, what am I gonna draw today? And then I'm like, I Google it, I see what everybody else is doing. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I don't wanna do that because that sucks or that's something I'm not interested in or that's a book or a story that I find problematic or, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> so I had to find a way to start loving what I do instead of doing it because of its profitability. And that's been my challenge. A lot of people have different challenges um, in why they have the art block. Usually it's either because you're tired of what you're doing, you're bored, you haven't done anything interesting in a while and you're tapped out creatively, or you're just exhausted. Um, a book that I highly recommend for this point here is The Artist's Way, which is a book that my friend Francis turned me on to, and it's like a how-to book, kind of, of, of getting your artist's life back, of being a good artist, of knowing how to be a good artist. It's, you wake up in the morning and you do journal pages, you take yourself on art dates. There's just, there's so much to this book and I highly, highly, highly recommend anyone who wants to be an artist to go and get that book. It's amazing. You can find it at most libraries. It's definitely on Amazon. Um, they have an ebook version of it. It's like, it's amazing. Um, so I highly recommend getting that for the first thing if you're experiencing major, major artist block. Um, secondly, take yourself on a date. Um, go somewhere that feels creatively interesting and just go there. You don't have to bring anything to draw. You don't have to do anything. You do what you enjoy. Go out in nature for the afternoon. Go on a hike. Go for a walk. Um, sit in a museum cafe, go downtown and just look at the architecture, go for a walk on the beach, take your dog out running, just anything that is gonna get you up and out of the house and makes you go do something that feels like it's going to help. Um, now I have to be a little bit more concerted in my efforts to take myself on art dates because I'm definitely a bit of a shut-in. Uh, I leave the house only to go to work and when I'm going to an art show. So uh, I've had to make more of an effort toward going out and actually having artist dates these days. Um, the most recent artist date I took myself on was to go to that porch show that I posted pictures of, um, which was really fun. The musicians, they were fantastic. Uh, and sometimes I'll go to like Panera Bread or something and I'll sit around and I'll draw and sketch. Sometimes I go to the park with the dog. We have a dog park that's kind of close to home and he loves to just go play. And then I can sit around with all these puppies that keep coming over and wanting to cuddle, which definitely helps. Um, sometimes I go to Francis's house and we sit around until four in the morning and we give each other challenges back and forth. We have this book that we pass back and forth between each other and it's a long accordion style book and each page is accordion style, you know? So like I'll draw something on one page and then flip it and then draw two lines that, are, that stem from the previous drawing and then she has to come up with something on the next page that incorporates those two lines and then she does it for me and then so on and so on. And I think we've done about eight pages in the current book, but it's, it's fun, it's creative, and it's not something that I would normally do on my own time. It's something that's interesting and that forces my brain outside of its normal place. Um, also, I think doodles are really helpful. Um, Zentangles are really helpful. Things that have like a, like a confined space and then you just have to fill the space with something. Um, I have a, a big newsprint book that I got from Michael's or Joann's or something. It was cheap. 
just cheap crap paper, not anything that you care about. And you just grab a pen or a marker or something big that has bold lines. You, you don't want like intricate lines because that gets you caught up in your mind again. Something big and bold and then you just draw like like big, big strokes. And then eventually something comes of that. You, you just moving your arm around forces your brain to connect to your arm. And then now you're able to do something. Sometimes I start with like big, big circles that help me to open up. Um, I've seen Frances, she does, uh, like, she has this, um, ink, and it's a, uh, not a liquid ink, it's, um, powder. And she, she puts the powdered ink on the page, and then she drips a little bit of water on it, and then she grabs a straw, and she just goes, and then the ink goes everywhere, and then she has an ink blot, and she has to try to come up with something to create that into. I had a really hard time doing that challenge. Um, I probably will post one eventually because she gives them to me as gifts, but <laughs> if I ever come up with something for that, I will do that. Um, yeah, I don't... Creative block sucks. It just sucks. And sometimes you've got to ride the tide. You've got to deal with it and just be like, I can't create right now. I have to take care of myself emotionally or I need to go play Fable for a few hours or I need to sit around and do nothing. Um, and watch bad TV. Like sometimes that just has to happen and you can't force yourself to be creative. You've got to take care of yourself and love yourself and make sure that the things that you're doing are things that you're doing for the right reason and that you're doing them for something that's genuine. Um, that's about all, all I have to say guys, but this is something that was kind of requested and I wanted to address it because it's something that's really important to me and I don't really vlog very often, but when I do, it's usually because I have something to say. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, or if you'd like to see some of the art that I actually do, uh, go ahead and like, subscribe, go onto my channel and check out the other playlists. Um, yeah. And I will see you guys in the very next video.